What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Back in the boat barn. Picked it up today from the shop. Got the cover off it. We got a lot of things to do to this. I'm going to get my tackle and mostly everything right and organized in here because I had to Florida in two weeks and that's coming up here really quick. But I got some other things that I got to do to the boat too. I'll show you guys real quick what I was having done. All right, guys, so this is the 31M150 12 volt uh, lithium that I got. It's 150 amp hour. This thing right here is just for my electronics. I got five graphs on this thing. I got two 126 SVs, and then I got three 106 SVs up front, all harnessed together with the C Clear Power harness, two live scope transducers up front. So I wanted a single battery just for those electronics. And then there's the NOCO Genius Charger. That is just for this battery. The other lithiums that power my trolling motor and the AGM are all together on the power pole charge. So all of the functions of the boat itself are on a separate charger. So I got those other batteries on the power pole charge system just so for some reason, if I'm going through some thick grass and fighting some current or something like that, I can run around and it'll charge the trolling motor batteries. And same with uh, the cranking battery, it'll use the volts being pus pushed out by the alternator in this thing to charge its own battery so this thing always starts and that's why i want to have my electronics on another setup five electronics is quite a bit to be running on the same system so i wanted to have its own battery now i got that thing in there i'm pro lithium all the way through really excited about it we're going to get this thing charged up and then we're going to do some updates to the graphs we're going to put some plastics and all the tackle and everything that i need for florida in the boat we're gonna keep packing up all this mess over here. I got more tackle to organize. You know, it's just like the typical off season stuff that you gotta keep up with when you wanna be efficient on the water. Um, we got a big snowstorm coming in and I don't know what's gonna happen on Thursday. So I wanna try and get as much stuff done today as I can. And yeah, just another day in the off season, trying to get everything straight. See, I'm doing a little bit at a time, you know, but I'm really itching to get back out there. So I love spending time in the boat, just looking at tackle thinking of new ways to organize stuff and just getting my mind and everything ready to go for the start of the season. It's going to be here soon. So yeah, let's jump up in this thing and get this thing going. I'm going to do a quick update, make sure everything's all good before we hit the road. Just another thing that I really like to do to make sure that I got all the proper mapping and everything. I got a couple SD cards that I'm going to plug into these things and check just to make sure I got everything straight for the first couple of events. Because the last thing I want to do is show up, launch the boat, and you got no mapping. And I I know this is bad because I've done it before. <laughs> I showed up to the Potomac last year and I had no maps on my units. And I was driving around like, well, uh, just stay in the marker buoys, stay in the marker buoys. But um, thank goodness that Garmin has the Active Captain app. I was able to go on there. I purchased the apps, download them on my phone, and then quickly download them to my unit as I was running. So it didn't really take too long to see where I was going, but still something you don't want to do. Just the little things you can handle off of the water to make sure when you get there, you're ready to go. It's the last thing on your mind. You know what you want to do and you just go fish and you go find the fish so you can make some money. We got the Garmin's all updated uh, and I got a couple things started here on what I want to do uh, for what I'm going to put in the boat. So I'll go through some of it, but swim jigs. It's a box full of swim jigs, it's a missile swim jig in here. Um, it's another thing that I'm probably gonna make another box of because I got more missile jigs that I'm gonna go through. Terminal tackle. I'll show you guys real quick how I organize my terminal tackle. All right, so I used the Bass Mafia coffin. This came with like all the styrofoam inserts and stuff so you could put your weights and everything in there, organize them by weight. But I don't do that. I got them all in their little bags still. Uh, and I write on there what the weight is. So these are, you can barely read it anymore. I think these are five eighths. Yeah, five eighths. And I got a bunch of them in there. There's worm weights, and then these ones are the flipping weights. So these are all Texoma weights right here. Uh, but yeah, but I got them labeled from lightest all the way up to heaviest. Heaviest ones I got, I got an ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half. I think ounce and a half is the heaviest I carry. I don't do a lot of punching, that's not really my thing. And then a thing full of bobber stops. Um, and yeah, hooks. Then I got them all. I keep them in their bag just to keep them nice and organized. And these ones, I just kind of, you know, they're all crumpled up because I'm trying to make them fit. But those are uh, 3 out HD worm hooks. Yeah, that's right. These are all worm hooks. So you got threes, 
Then you got fours. They're coming out of their little pouch. Get that straight. Thing of gummies. And then I got fives. Uh, I don't really use much, many worm hooks bigger than that. But then uh, these are all EWGs. These are fours and there's threes. There's more threes. And then there's some bigger ones down there too. And some split ring ones from VMC. Um, and I'm still playing with ways to organize all this too. But you know, this is just what work this is what's been working for me. Uh, here's my tube hooks. Um, yeah, and then these are all different flipping hooks. Um, a lot of troll car stuff. You know, I, I hear a lot of mixed opinions about them. To me, the troll car hooks aren't the worst hooks, but you've really got to keep an eye on the point because the point will bend over because it is that laser sharp. It's got like the three angles. Uh, it's a really sharp hook. It really gets good penetration. You don't have to set the hook hard to bury that hook. Um, but it's just one of those things that, you know, you just got to keep an eye on it. Otherwise, if you pull really hard or that hook point dulls over, you blow a big hole in the fish's mouth and it just makes it that much easier for it to back back out. Um, that's why you see, like, I got a big thing of gummies. Uh, I throw off some owner. I got owners in here. I got mustads. I'm kind of starting to lean away from the troll cars for that reason and just experimenting with other hooks. I've been throwing troll cars for a while and I know there's been a lot of good technology. The Gamagatsu technology that they've come out with with their super slick hooks uh, that I use on my drop shots. Um, been using those a little bit when it comes to other applications as well. But that is the terminal tackle box. That'll definitely be in the boat for Florida. Uh, then they got some walking top waters, just because you never know. Um, this one right here, frogs. It's just one of those things in Florida, you gotta have them in the boat. Um, probably throws it around a little bit. And then this is gonna be a staple for me. It's a box full of jackhammers. They got a bunch of different colors. You got the golden shiner, black and blue, uh, the green pumpkin red. Uh, I think that's called like Brett's Craw. I don't know the exact color names. I really don't. I just like the colors. Um, but yeah, these will definitely play on all control. We along with the swim jig. Um, and that's pretty much I'm going to throw a couple other things in there too. Um, but a lot of it is going to be plastics for Florida, I feel like. And I'm not even close to that yet. I'm still organizing back of the boat. It's still kind of a disaster, but we're getting her done. I'm just trying to get everything um, lined up here for putting in here. I don't know if I'm going to put it in the boat tonight. I probably will. I'll probably be here really late tonight. Um, but yeah. Just trying to figure out new ways to organize stuff and make me as efficient as I can be. Um, all these boxes over here, they have stuff in them. I'm going to take everything out, put it into small Ziploc bags, and then clean those out because there is some rust in there. And when rust gets into these boxes, it seems to spread like wildfire. So I'll take everything out, throw away all the bad hooks, uh, put everything else in small Ziploc bags, and clean it out. And then I'll probably find another way because a lot of that stuff is jig heads. I'm going to start organizing that stuff a little bit different way, I think. I'm still on the fence about it, but I think. I don't know. But yeah, back doors and I have this stuff. I'll show you what I'm doing back here. Okay, so this is my mag draft box and a couple other little things over here too. Um, but yeah, I got some inline swim baits in here. Uh, some, I got one SKT. You know, something I don't throw a lot. Um, I, I just bought it on a whim, <laughs> but I do love throwing these mag drafts and I'm going to start storing them actually just like this to keep their tails straight. Um, and like you can see how that one you can kind of see through, you know, it's like transparent. Um, but these ones here were a weird batch that I got where they're like chartreuse all the way through. Now, they're, I mean, they're $14 a piece. So I really don't want to get rid of them, but they just look a little off. But I'm keeping them just in case some application comes up. And, uh, you know, they want a little bit of a chartreuse, but who knows? I just watched another video on, like, how to store them and just try to keep things as organized as I can. So that's why I'm going to start keeping them in their little containers. Um, but, yeah, this is this was another box that will... Probably be in the boat. 
Um, just because, I mean, uh, I, I can't go without throwing a mag draft pretty much anywhere I go. I don't care how weedy and grassy it is. It's just a bait that tends to get a lot of bites. So I'm definitely going to be throwing that thing around quite a bit. This is a box that is always in the boat with me. Well, I've been out here for about three hours and uh, I kind of got a little bit of an idea. You know, you can see the front and back. There's a lot of bags of plastics up there. Um, just reorganized my lipless box. Got that all done. I'm not really a big uh, lipless crank thrower, but when they're on it, like it's hard to beat. So this little box was slammed full. I had no more room and I have more of these in a package yet. So needed a bigger box of that, but we'll go over here and kind of go through. I'm gonna step around right all this. Ah. We'll go through some of the stuff that I got uh, ready to go for plastic wise. So, like I mentioned, B bombs. These are these are the regular size ones. Uh, along with this huge thing right here, this is all different B bombs. Um, bombas, the three and a half inch bombas. Got these on here. They're gonna be in the boat for sure. Four and a half inch quiver worms. Good variety of them. Spunk shads. More is like a chatterbait trailer. Um, but they'll be in here. I'm actually gonna rearrange that a little bit because we want the six and a half inch quiver worms because those are gonna be in the boat. Magic worms. Uh, baby D bombs, just in case, you know, for flip, for punching and that kind of stuff, you want kind of want a, a smaller profile. Uh, and then a, a couple chunky D's. I know I got these ones organized because they're in the hard shells. So I got them divided up. I got like white and the pearl, and then I got green pumpkin, like the variety of green pumpkin colors. And then this one's like black and blue. I think this one's got super bug. Yeah. And California love in it. So like the darker water colors. Superbug's one of those ones you can throw anywhere, but it's got black and blue in it, so it's in here. And then, yeah, these, these are, like, going to be up towards the front of the boat because I know these ones will see a lot of time. Um, one thing that you can't go to Okeechobee without is the Big Easies. Like, I got a bag full of Gambler Big Easies that I'm going to be throwing uh, and a couple other things, you know, just worms, a lot of worms. Um, yeah. Speed worms, mag speed worms. I got regular size speed worms. Um, I mean, trick worms, you know, just Florida fishing staples. They eat a lot of sluggish baits like a worm. Um, and of course, you know, the Cinco. You throw stick baits in Florida. And if you don't, you're dumb because they eat it. Um, but yeah, definitely. Just a, a little short, like, overview of what I'll be having in the boat. Um, I will get all this organized eventually, and I will show you guys when I get it all put in the boat and everything's nice and organized. All right, got a little sidetracked, but basically still got all the soft plastics up on the front deck, and now I'm working on putting the missile bait headbanger jigs away, uh, redoing my entire football jig and ball headed jig box. As you can tell, there's basically two colors of missile headbanger jigs that I throw. That's green pumpkin and peanut butter and jelly in two sizes. I go from uh, lightest to heaviest, so half, three quarter. Pretty simple, um, but yeah, got a pile of them, so I should be good for the year, maybe but they're gonna be chomping this thing. I love these jigs. It's a different head shape than your average football jig. It's a little bit more narrow, but I think, I mean, these things come through cover amazingly. I love them. And uh, yeah, you throw a chunky D on the back of this thing and it is a fish catching machine. Um, I have, like I said, like the front of the boat and, and all the tackle that I've already put in here is pretty much all that I'm gonna use on Okeechobee. Um, but I go to Wachita after that. So that's why I'm kind of working on the football jigs and working on Demiki rig stuff and jig heads and just finesse stuff. And like all of this stuff has to be good for basically three weeks on the road. I'm also going to be hitting uh, Logan Martin for a little pre-practice. I don't know how much I'm going to fish. That one's probably just going to be more of a ride around because I've never been there before. Look around and see what I can find. Um, but then I'm going to be on Gunnersville. 
and Gunnersville is going to be a blast because that place fishes phenomenally in February. Uh, so I'm going to be catching some on a chatterbait, a lipless crankbait, probably some swim bait stuff. Yeah, that's going to be a good time. Um, and then I'm also probably going to go to Lewis Smith and Demeke rig up some big old spotted bass just because that sounds like a lot of fun to me. So I'm probably going to do that again. That's why I got to get all my finesse stuff ready. I got all my drop shot stuff, my Nico stuff. And then over here I got all Demeke heads and a couple swim bait heads. I'm just going to keep trucking away, get this stuff done. Yeah, that's what I'm up to. Off-season prep. Side note. Okay, just so you guys know. It's the middle of winter here. I mean, we got a big snowstorm coming. It really wasn't that cold today, but still, it's pretty cold. I'm decked out in Grunitz gear. I got the bulkhead fleece line pants on. I got the deck boss boots on, some insulated socks, and then the Dillingham sweatshirt. This thing is legit. It is so warm. I don't have my hood pulled up, but if I did, this would stop like right here. Really tucks you in really good. If you haven't checked out any of the Grunin's gear, as far as like their wintertime, their cold stuff, I mean, the Duck Boss boots, they've kind of been like a, a staple in the industry. They, they're really the ones who like set the bar really high with commercial fishing and everything. And the boots are phenomenal, but the rest of their apparel is not a slouch. Like it is phenomenal stuff. I wear this sweatshirt probably way too much. Uh, and these same with these pants. I mean, I wear these things for everything. These are like my layer up pants. I'll wear these underneath my rain suit when I go up and fish or when I go out and fish when it's cold. Uh, I'll wear these in the duck blind too underneath my waders. I wear these things a lot. Guys, thanks y'all for watching. If you want to head over and check out uh, any of the products here, I'll link the real shot so you can head on over. I'll put my discount code in there. Find anything you like. Make sure to make a purchase. Missile baits, the Garmin electronic stuff, I'll take them too. And... Pro Guide batteries. Guys, keep them in mind. They're made here in America. They are one of the original lithium batteries on the market. Head on over, check them out, check out all the options that they have to offer. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.